Cortisone injections have several advantages. They're cheap, they're easy to perform, they carry a low risk of immediate complications, and they often lead to a reduction of pain. And that is why they are a go-to treatment option for many different injuries. But the question today is, do cortisone shots also help patelltonitis? For those of you who don't know me, I'm Martin Koban. I've had patelltonitis myself many, many years ago, and I've written a book about it in 2013. Just so you know, it's not just some guy sitting there talking about cortisone shots. But I'm not a doctor, so if you have an injury or suspect that you have an injury, go get treated by a doctor in person. This video, like all the other videos on my channel, are just for educational purposes and they're not medical advice. Okay, so for the sake of argument, let's say Jeff, a very good friend of mine, calls me and says, So it turns out I have patellar tendonitis. Do you think I should get a cortisone shot? I would tell Jeff that I could be wrong, but to my knowledge, cortisone injections can make people with patellar tendonitis feel better for a few weeks. However, this short-term reduction of pain comes at a cost, and this cost is a worse long-term outcome and a higher risk of setbacks. In fact, if you look through the research on cortisone injections for patellar tendonitis or for similar injuries, you'll find that cortisone injections will lower collagen synthesis in the tendon, Compared to placebo injections, cortisone shots led to worse clinical outcomes after one year. In one study, 72% of the cortisone injection group suffered a setback. The injections also led to a higher risk of tendon rupture by reducing failure stress of the tendon, and repeated cortisone injections led to lower bone quality. Research findings like these have even caused experts to joke that corticosteroids are the ideal treatment for people you don't like. And anecdotally, I also know a small number of athletes that really did suffer a tendon tear after repeated cortisone injections. All of them were competitive athletes at a high level though, and they insisted on staying active after the receiving several cortisone injections. So with all that in mind, I would tell Jeff that if I were him, I would first exhaust all the conventional options first before even thinking about cortisone shots. So icing for the pain, activity modification to deal with an irritated tendon, and then slow strengthening exercises at a level that his tendons can tolerate to begin building them up again. But if Jeff still decides to take the cortisone shot, I would ask him to take it easy for a couple of weeks. So ideally, no sports and focus on light rehab exercises only. I would tell him, don't let the reduced pain trick you into thinking everything is okay, because the worst decision Jeff could make would be to get the shot and to then stay active in sports as if nothing had happened. The cortisone wouldn't magically heal his tendon, but it could make his knees feel a lot better, maybe even normal again, and as you can imagine, that is a dangerous combination for someone who loves sports. So for Jeff, who just has patellar tendonitis, cortisone shot, a cortisone shot would not help his long-term outcome. But if other conditions were involved, like say, fat pad inflammation for example, the situation may change and cortisone may be helpful, but that's a decision the treating physician has to make. If you found this video useful, subscribe to this channel for more videos about patellar tendonitis. For example, there's one about which stretch works best based on the feedback of hundreds of people with patellar tendonitis, and that's super useful because it can save you weeks of trial and error. And last things last, if you're looking for the references for the research I mentioned in this uh, video, check the video description below. That's it for now, and I will see you next time.